Hi, now this is a follow-up example that you might like to try on equilibrium of a rigid body. What we've got here is a uniform rod AB of length L and it has this ring here at B which slides on a rough horizontal pole. And the coefficient of friction between the rod and the pole is 0.2. The end A is attached by an inextensible string of length L to a point C on the pole. And given that the rod is in equilibrium and inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal, what we've got to do is find the smallest value of theta. So if you'd like to try this, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, do fast forward if you want to check your answer. Otherwise, you'll find that I'm going to take you slowly through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, the first thing we need to do is start to label up this diagram. And being an isosceles triangle here, this angle that the string makes with the horizontal must also be an angle theta. So just mark that angle in there as theta. And if we start to put some forces in, being a uniform rod, let's just say that its mass is m, so therefore its weight, which is going to act in the middle here, acts vertically down. We're going to say that that's mg. We've also got the tension in the string. That's going to act in that direction. So we'll label that as T. And what else have we got? Well, when it comes to the ring, this ring's going to want to slide towards C. So friction will act in the opposite direction. And so that's going to act in that direction there. And I'm going to call it F. And we know that F has got to be less than or equal to the coefficient of friction mu times the normal contact force. Well, that normal contact force I'm going to call R, and it's going to act upwards like that. Okay, so mark that in there as R. Now, knowing that mu is 0 0.2, that's one fifth, I'm going to say that this must be less than or equal to R over 5 then. Okay, a fifth of R. Now, what I'm going to be doing is resolving vertically and horizontally, and I'm also going to be taking moments. So I need to put some angles in, and what we'll have then is, if we extend this line here, then this angle will be theta in here. It corresponds with this angle down here. We've got two parallel lines. And if I mark in a perpendicular to that dotted line there, then this angle in here must be also theta because this angle in here would be 90 minus theta when we look at this theta here. And because this angle is 90 degrees, this must then be theta again. Also, let's have a dotted line down here. And this angle in here would also be theta. Okay, because this one here would be 90 minus theta. So, should be happy with that. And uh, I might as well also mark in a vertical dotted line there. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to do is resolve. We're going to resolve vertically, upwards is positive. And if I resolve upwards, we've got the component of the tension upwards. That's going to be T sine theta. We've also got the weight, which acts downwards, that's minus mg. And we've got R acting upwards, so that's plus R. Remember, this force is perpendicular, the friction, so it's not going to have any effect. This is the resultant force on the rod, and it's going to be equal to zero because it's in equilibrium. And so if I rearrange this for sine theta, t sine theta, I've got therefore t sine theta equals mg minus r. Okay, so that's my first equation. We're going to be looking at simultaneous equations 
throughout this. Next I'm going to resolve horizontally, we'll take to the right as positive, and I've got the frictional force F, so it's going to be F. R won't come into this because it's perpendicular, nor will MG. But then we've got the tension here. The component of T acting horizontally will be T cosine theta. So that would be minus T cosine theta because it acts in the opposite direction. And that's it. It's in equilibrium, so that resultant force will be equal to zero. And if I rearrange this for T cosine theta, I'd therefore have T cosine theta equals F. OK, and I'll call that equation 2. So I've done my two resolving equations. I need to do a moments equation. And I'll do that over here on the right hand side. So what I'd want to do is take moments, say, about A. It doesn't really matter where I take moments about, but I think it'll be easier to take moments about A. So what we'll do is we'll have moments about A, and I'll take clockwise as being positive. And so let's start then with the weight, mg. And if I split this into two components, one at right angles and one down the rod, the one down the rod passes through the point A, so that's going to have no effect. The component of mg perpendicular to the rod will be mg cosine theta. So what we've got here is mg cosine of theta. And we need to multiply that by that distance to A. So that's going to be L over 2. OK, half the length. Now if I take... F, I can split that into two components, one perpendicular to the rod and one along the rod. The force along the rod, that component along that dotted line, won't have any effect in turning it because that component passes through A. It's the one perpendicular to the rod that is going to want to turn that. If I just draw a dotted line in there, it's the component in that direction there which will be F sine theta. And it's in the positive sense, that's going to be plus F sine theta. And we need to multiply that by the distance back to A, which will be L. So I'll just put that in brackets there, and we'll multiply that with L. We've got R. We can split that into two components, one along that dotted line there, and one along that dotted line there. The one along this dotted line has no effect because that component will pass through the rod into A, OK? So it won't want to turn it. It's this component that will want to turn it. Also, in an anti-clockwise direction, in the negative sense. And that's going to be R cos theta. R cos theta is that component of force, and we multiply it by that distance L and it's going to be negative. So it's minus r cos theta, and it's multiplied by the distance l. And that's it, because the tension passes through A, so it has no effect in turning it. So this is the moment about A, and because it's in equilibrium, the resultant moment will be zero. And I notice that because we've got L in every term, we can cancel it out, OK? We can divide through by L, so it's going to go once there. Now, I've got to see where we're going to go with this because we've got simultaneous equations. And I notice there's no tension T in this equation. So what I need to do is eliminate the tension T first of all. And I can do that from these two equations here by dividing 1 by 2. So if I do equation 1 then divided by equation 2, what's going to happen then is the t's are going to cancel and it's going to give me sine theta over cosine theta, which is tangent theta or tan theta for short there. 
and it's going to be equal to mg minus r all divided by the frictional force F. Okay? And now I can see that if I rearrange this for mg, I can substitute it in here. So therefore, if I multiply by F to both sides and add R, I'm going to get mg equals the frictional force F tan theta, and then that's going to be plus R. So I'm going to call this equation 3 and the moments equation 4. And what I'm going to do is now get rid of this 2 here by multiplying through by 2 in this equation and substituting equation 3 into equation 4. So quite a lot going on here. So I'm just going to say multiply throughout here by 2 and sub okay equation 3 into 4 okay we'll just say in 4 so if I multiply by 2 we're just going to get mg cos theta here and if I substitute for mg in we're going to have uh, the frictional force F times tan of theta plus R and that's going to be all multiplied by cosine of theta. This term is multiplied by 2, so we're going to get 2f sine theta. So we'll have plus 2f sine theta. And this term here is going to be multiplied by 2, so it's going to be minus 2r cosine of theta. And that's going to be equal to 0. Now, if I multiply through by cos theta, we've got tan theta, which is sine theta over cosine theta, then the cosine thetas will cancel and we'll just be left with f sine of theta. And then we're going to have plus r cosine theta and then plus 2f sine theta and minus 2r cos theta. So I should be able to group up some terms here now. Now grouping up the f sine theta terms, I can see that I've therefore got 3f sine theta and I've got for the r cos theta terms, I've got minus r cos theta. So therefore, if I add that to both sides, I've got that this equals r cosine theta. And what I can do now is make f the subject. So therefore we've got f equals r cos theta. And I can divide both sides by 3 sine theta. And I've got all of that over 3 sine theta. Now f is less than or equal to mu r. In other words, less than or equal to r over 5. So what we've got then is that therefore r cos theta divided by 3 sine theta must be less than or equal to r over 5. And I can see now that the r's will cancel if I divide both sides by r. And also cosine theta over sine theta is going to be 1 over tan theta. So if I was to cancel these out, let's just divide through by cos theta, top and bottom, I end up here with 1 there, and this becomes tan theta. So all I need to do is rearrange this for tan theta. Now if I multiply both sides by tan theta and 5, rearrange it, I end up with tan theta being greater than or equal to 5 thirds. Okay, 5 divided by 3 there. And so if I work out theta by taking the inverse tan of 5 thirds, I therefore find that I got theta is greater than or equal to 59.03 and so on. And that would be measured in degrees. And rounding that, say, to one decimal place, we're going to find that theta is greater than or equal to 
0.0 degrees and we'll just put in there to one decimal place, one dp for short. Okay, well, hope you've been able to get that right. If not, at least been able to see how to do this. Quite a lengthy question, but uh, nonetheless, very standard technique, resolving in two perpendicular directions and taking moments about a point. Work with the simultaneous equations and hopefully should be able to get these questions to work out. Okay, so thanks for listening and hopefully if you need any more support, you'll come back and look at any other videos.